2.2 properties of exponents. You have a bunch of properties to look at today. You must know these before you do the problems. All of this should look familiar because it is from Algebra 1. And it, we're still early in Algebra 2, so we have to make sure you know this stuff before we go upwards and onwards. Algebra 2 is not a review of Algebra 1, it's a continuation of it. Sometimes we still have to go over some stuff anyway. Rule 1 is that when you're multiplying two items together that have the same base, you add the exponents, such as x to the m times x to the n equals x to the m plus n. And what that translates into is something like this. x to the 5th times x to the 7th would be x to the 12th. 5 plus 7 is 12. If I had x to the negative 2 times x to the negative 6th, that would be x to the negative eighth. If I had x to the negative third times x to the eighth, that would be x to the fifth. <coughs> Add the exponents when the bases are the same. If you had something like a to the third times b to the fourth, that is not ab to the seventh. That does not work. Only if the bases are the same, 2x's, two 2a's, two 2b's, two and so on. What would the simplified version of number 1 be out worth? x to the third is right. Somebody else give me the second one, bays. x to the seventh is right. And somebody else for the last one, Lewis. x to the ninth is right. Any questions? What would be the solution for the first one, Ranieri? It would not be x to the third. It would be mollet. X to the negative third is right. And for the second one, what would that be, Daniels? X to the negative fourth, right. And the last one, what would this be, Johnson? X to the negative fifth. This rule is about division. When you have the same item over the same item, such as the same base over the same base, x and x in this case x to the m power over x to the n power is the same thing as x to the m minus n. Makes no difference what the numbers are, you still subtract. It's the same thing as saying x to the fourth over x to the second. That's x to the four minus two, which is x squared. It's the same thing as x to the negative two over x to the fourth. That's x to the negative 2 minus 4, which is x to the negative 6. And if I had a to the negative 3rd over a to the negative 5th, that would be a to the negative 3rd minus uh, the negative 5th. That's the same thing as a squared. Adkins m, what would be the answer to the first one? x to the third is right. And what about acres? What's the answer to the second one? x to the fifth, to the fifth yes. Mm -hmm. Subtract the exponents. Uh, let's see, bays, what would be the answer for the first one? x to the fifth, to the fifth power is right. Daniels, what about this one? x to the, x to the seventh is right. Davis, what's the answer to the first one? It's not x to the third. Gilkey, what's the answer to that one? x to the negative third, right. Negative six minus a negative three would be negative three. Uh, Hellyer, what's the answer to the second one? Just x is right. It would be negative four minus a negative five. That comes out to be a positive one, which you do not write. It's just x. In this rule, you have the quantity squared of a fraction. Anytime you have an exponent on parentheses, you're going to let that exponent act on each item in the parentheses. So notice that the squared is applied to the x as well as the y on the bottom. You end up with x squared over y squared. That's no different than a over b and then taking that quantity to the third power a to the third over b to the third. 
even if there are exponents already on some of those variables. For instance, x squared over y to the fifth. And I want the quantity squared of that fraction. You distribute the exponent of 2 from the outside to each one on the inside. So it would be x to the fourth over y to the tenth. Distribute the exponent to each one in there. If I had a to the negative 2 over b to the sixth, and I wanted the third power of all of that, distribute the 3 to get a to the negative sixth over b to the eighteenth. What would this be simplified? And that goes to Johnson. Yes, x to the 8th over y to the 12th. Jones, what would this one be? That's right. Lewis, what would this one be? That's right, x to the 8th over x to the 6th, and can this be simplified even further? And that goes to Mollet. What would it be? X to the 14th. Not x to the 14th. We got x over x. And what operation do we do to the exponents when we have an x over x? Subtraction. Subtraction. So Otworth, what would be the so solution? The x, squared. x squared, right. 8 minus 6. Ranieri, what would be the answer to this one? That's right, x to the negative 6th over x to the negative 15th. That's right. And we're going to use this problem to show how we can carry this even further along. You have x over x. So if I simplify this, what would I come up with? And that goes to Salyer's M. X to the 9th is right. Because negative 6 minus a negative 15 is positive 9. Anything to the zero power is just going to be 1. Anything to the zero power is 1. If I had a negative 1.375 to the zero power, the answer is 1. If I had a quantity to the zero power of the third root of x to the fourth, y to the second, the answer is still 1. The answer is not zero, and that is the most common mistake on that problem, Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. Look at the problem as a whole and make sure you don't end up doing a bunch of simplifying in here and a bunch of extra work only to arrive at this and think, ah, the answer is 1. It's no different than looking at a problem like this, 3 times 2 times 6 divided by 12 times 6 times 0 times 2, and then you start here, and then move along to here, then to there, then to there, and then you discover you just did all that work for nothing, because it's times 0, and then times 2 at the end. If you look at the problem as a whole, and identify that it's all multiplication, and there's a 0 in there, then the answer is 0 to that problem. The difference is, in the property of exponents, anything to the 0 power is 1, not 0. Sanders, what's the answer to this problem? One. One, that's right. And uh, Adkins M, what's the answer to this problem? One, that's right. This rule is very important because most answers will not be simplified completely if you forget this rule. And that is, whenever you have something to a negative exponent, you can simplify that by moving that item and its exponent to the bottom and making the exponent positive. For example, 3 to the negative 2 power is the same as 1 over 3 squared, which of course is 9 on the bottom, 1 over 9. From here on out, when you get a negative exponent in your final answer, you want to simplify that. If I have x to the negative 3 power, that's the same as 1 over 
x to the third. What if I had something like this? x to the negative second, y to the fourth. My x to the negative second should go to the bottom and become x squared, but your y to the fourth doesn't have to go there. It's a positive exponent. So you end up with y to the fourth over x to the second. Don't just automatically move everything to the bottom. It must have a negative exponent on it. Sometimes you can flip both of them like this. x to the negative third over y to the negative fifth. If you have something in the bottom that has a negative exponent on it, you move it to the top and make it a positive exponent. And then with the top, you have x to the negative third, it will go to the bottom and become x to the third. What should this one be acres? Um, y to the fourth over x to the That's right, y to the third over x squared. What about this one bays? Well, you're right to start with. Okay. So, y, y squared. Yeah. Over x squared over y. That's right. So she gets the point for that, but we're going to let the next person simplify. And we'll go to Daniels. Can we simplify those x's, x to the third over x to the second? What operation do I do with this and this if they're over top of each other? Subtract. Subtract. So what's 3 minus 2? It would just be x there. And what about 2 and then 1? It would just be y. All right. What about this one? This will go to Davis. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. She gets the point for that. And Gilkey, can you simplify that further? What's x squared times x to the fourth? Now, x to the eighth, what operation do we do when we're multiplying two items? We're multiplying. When you divide, you subtract. When you multiply, you add. So what should, should it be? Yeah, and on the bottom? Y to the seventh, yes. All right. So here's the next item here. This is the most confusing that you will see of the whole day, but it's really not that rough once you do it a few times. If you have a fractional exponent, such as a to the m over n power, remember you can rewrite this as a root. And the number of that root is on the bottom of that fraction. So this is the nth root of a to the m power. This raises this to a power underneath the radical sign. The bottom number of the fraction is the root that you're taking of that. It's the same thing as saying this. If I had 16 to the 1 half power, the root that I'm taking is 2. It's from the bottom of the fraction. And 16 is raised to the first power. A second root is the same thing as a square root. And square roots don't have to have the root written. It's just automatic. 16 to the first power is 16. But what's the square root of 16? 4. So always simplify these as far as you can go. Here's another one just like it. If I had 32 to the 2 thirds power, that's the same thing as the third root of 32 to the second power. You can try to evaluate it on your calculator to see if it works out. 
And the way you do that is this. Here are the keystrokes you would use in your calculator in blue. Sometimes it's a decimal, sometimes it's a whole number or an integer. If you want the third root of something, that's how you would put it in. And you want the third root of 32 squared. So you put parentheses around 32 squared, use the caret button, which is underneath the clear button, and then put parentheses around your root and express the root as a fraction. Notice that the fraction in the problem was two-thirds. We've already used that 2 on the 32, so you just need the 3. And don't forget it's a fraction, so you put it in as 1 -third. Put parentheses around it as well. So if I do that in my calculator, I come up with approximately 10.0793. Six eight four, And if you cannot get an integer out of this, then usually we don't carry it into decimals. If it will not reduce neatly like the uh, 16 to the half power, then there's no need to write 10.079 and round and all that stuff. You would just leave it as the third root of 32 to the second power, or you could simplify it by making, making it this. You could make it the third root of 32 squared, which is 1024. That would be the most simplified way we would express it and not get into decimals after that. Help. Fourth root of? Is that right? What goes on the bottom? That's the root. So it should be third root of x to the fourth. Remember the bottom number of the fraction is what the root is. And then this top number is what that item is being raised to underneath the radical sign. Johnson, what about this one? How would I write that one? It's the fourth root. Fourth root of x cubed. That's right. And this one will go to Jones. What would that be? Third root of x to the negative second. Here's what you should do with this. How can I simplify this just as it is? x to the negative two-thirds. What do I do with negative exponents? You flip them. So you're going to have the uh, one over x to the two-thirds. And then that would be one over the third root of x squared. Now from algebra one you should remember you cannot have radical terms in the denominator. So you would take care of that, but we're not doing that in this lesson. m to the fifth, m to the negative fourth. Just bring me up the answer with your name on it. m to the fifth times m to the negative fourth is m to the fifth plus negative four, which is m to the first, but you only write m. x to the third to the fifth. The solution for this should be x to the 15th, the third power of x to the negative 2. This is x to the negative 6 power, but you have to simplify it as 1 over x to the 6. w to the negative 4th over w to the negative 2. We're going to divide w to the negative 4th by w to the negative 2. That's w to the negative 4 minus a negative 2 power, which is w to the negative 2, which is 1 over w squared. In this problem, you need the negative third power of the quantity of 4x to the negative 2 over x to the third. Simplify 
each step of the way. You do not have to do anything with this yet. Inside the parentheses, uh, you have 4 x to the negative 2 and on the bottom x to the third. When you distribute this, it goes to everything in here, including the 4. Most common mistake in this problem is to just leave it as 4. That should be 4 to the negative third power. And then you multiply these two to get x to the sixth. And on the bottom down here, x to the negative ninth. Now rearrange these as necessary. You have 4 to the negative third on top, so that's 4 to the third on the bottom. x to the sixth stays, and this one goes to the top. So you have x to the fifteenth over 64.